outside a market on the outskirts of Buenos Aires. People are rummaging through fruits and vegetables that have been thrown away to grab whatever is salvageable. It's where Anaí Robledo gets the food to run her community kitchen in a poor part of the city. She feeds 50 families every day, and she's struggling with the inflation that's been throwing more and more people into poverty. Some time ago, between 10 or 15 families used to come and we cooked three times a week. Now, it's different. There are 50 families, but bear in mind each mother has 10 children, or eight, seven, five. It became impossible to count the dishes you have to make for that amount of people. Robledo, a domestic worker who volunteers on the side, says the soup kitchen simply can't keep up. It makes me sad because nothing changed. Nothing changed, but got worse. I'd like each family to have a plate of food on their table to eat with their children, so they didn't have the need to come to a soup kitchen to get food. Argentina is battling an economic crisis with inflation. It's estimated to hit around 150 percent by the end of the year, one of the highest rates in the world. Some four in every ten people in the country have been left struggling in poverty. Email exchanges from inside the BBC, they talk about the risk of violating Indian laws. It's easier to rake up the freedom of speech debate, but does it give anyone a free pass to knowingly violate the law? America supports India because it needs India's support in return. And India is working with the US because it suits India's interests. This is how geopolitics works. Last night, he diffused a crisis with his defense minister. But today, Netanyahu was confronted with a new problem. His cabinet seems to have rebelled against him. The UK is looking at the Indian subcontinent to fill its coffers. That India seems to be negotiating from a position of power, like a partner and not a former colony. and Russia are dangerously close to an armed conflict. This year, 2023, New Delhi will be the capital of global diplomacy. For a country as diverse as ours, with 88% of the population illiterate, it was a very big deal to write a constitution, and that too, the world's largest. Meanwhile, if we may, here's a Republic Day gift from India for the BBC. A list of suggestions for the BBC for their upcoming documentaries. Number one, the Kohinoor and the colonial loot. Number two, an outdated monarchy and unhealthy obsession with the royals. Number three, racism in 2023. We're waiting.